Well, good afternoon and welcome to I'm Charlie Lee High School. I'm Dan Cox, Superintendent of Schools here, and we're so excited to have the Lieutenant Governor from Reynolds with us today. Uh, STEM is an important part of Charles City, Floyd County, as well as Mitchell County and Chickasaw County. And we have, as part of our STEM Best grant, four schools taking part, Osage, Rockford, New Hampton, and Charles City. We've got superintendents here from Osage and Rockford, Keith Turner and Barb Schwamming. Jay Jurens couldn't be here. He had another meeting to get to. But we're excited to host the, the Lieutenant Governor. And uh, serving as MC today will be Paul Gibbons. And Paul is the North Central STEM Region Director. So Paul, I'll have you on up. Well, thank you, Dr. Cox. I appreciate your hospitality today. It's great to be up here in Charlotte City and getting a chance to see and learn firsthand uh, all of the innovations that are going on um, up here, and uh, we're very grateful to be invited. Um, it is really my honor, and I really just want to move on, and so we can get it started. And uh, it, it really is my honor to join everyone in welcoming. Or I want to invite you to join me in welcoming our Lieutenant Governor. Uh, Kim Reynolds. She's the co-chair of the Governor's STEM Advisory Council, um, whose commitment to giving Iowa students a world-class STEM education is unmatched. Turn this over to the Governor. Oh. We're going to just oh, get the Oh, we're going to get the Oh, oh yeah, right? oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff Weld, I'm the Executive Director of the Governor's STEM Advisory Council, serving our Lieutenant Governor as ably as I can. She tours the state and transforms education systems. It is so great to be in common country. Uh, our latest partner on the STEM Best Model, what an interesting collaborative Northeastern solution to the challenges that lie before us in the education, industry, talent pipeline, career trajectory, for climate. Before the Lieutenant Governor speaks to I'm going to share some updated material about what our step council has been doing statewide and how that integrates with the common country. Right. Yeah. Lieutenant Governor has volunteered to She gets to credit for an awful lot of what I'm going to show you. So that map, thank you, Lieutenant Governor. It's fantastic. I'm sure it appears to you to be Iowa with the measles. <laughs> Can you make out the little triangles? There's over a thousand of them across the state. Iowa doesn't have the measles. Iowa has the stemmels. Each of these triangles is a STEM destination in our state. Charles City should be a big giant triangle. We've done a number of scale ups and things that the Lieutenant Governor will mention in a few minutes. But I want you to know you're in good company. We, Lieutenant Governor, her co chair, STEM Council, regional managers such as Paul, are transforming the state in ways that I think have captivated the national imagination. And I think that picture tells the story. Now I'll get into some data. I skipped that. So these are uh, uh, graphs and charts. You like graphs and charts? Students, I'm sure. Uh, these are the graphs and charts gleaned from the annual evaluation study done by an independent consortium at the University of Northern Iowa and Iowa State University and the University of Iowa, which one do you have there? That is interest. So of the 100,000 or so children of Iowa, about a fifth of all the kids of the state annually participate in the scaling of the best known STEM programming that we believe from around the world and filter and deliver to the kids of the state thanks to the legislature's support. And this is just one graph that comes out of that. You don't have to read the details. All you have to be able to tell the difference is the green and the orange bars. The green bars are the children of Iowa who took the Iowa test last year and professed an interest in science, technology, engineering, mathematics. The orange bar is the interest of kids who didn't participate in their STEM programs. So the only thing you've got to take away from that is the green bar is a lot higher than the orange bar across the board, and that tells you that we're doing something very special when we introduce kids to STEM. The interest rises. And then this is harder one, than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> we're upside down. Oh, we're upside down? Oops. So this one again, green versus orange. These are test scores in math, science, and surprise, surprise, reading, we have uh, students who are participating in STEM programs outperforming their peers who are not in all three of those subjects. I gotta admit, the reading was a big bonus and surprise that we didn't see coming. So I'm really pleased with the effects on the tests of Iowa kids. We all enjoy the Iowa test. Have you got you? Iowa test? 
And I take them serious because we're watching. Uh, this one, oh, this is college finishing. So this is a nice stepwise. All you have to notice here is we're also monitoring STEM enrollments in our colleges and universities and community colleges. I can't tell you how pleasing it is to see the stepwise progression over the years. We just about got last year's data captured. And we hope and expect that stepwise progression continues where Iowans are being inspired to go post-secondary community college and university in the STEM fields. That's what that graph tells you. Probably about nothing. Um, here. And finally, this one's just kind of a network. If you've been connected to some of the adults in the room to STEM over the years, uh, the STEM uh, wave really took hold around 2011 when the governor launched the Governor's STEM Advisory Council. And that squiggly uh, picture to Paul's side is a network of STEM professionals across the state between 2007 and 2011. You'll note there was a, a respectable number of people involving themselves in STEM interconnectivity, but we have really put it on steroids since. And so to the Lieutenant Governor's side is a recent graph of the adults of Iowa from the private sector, business and industry, schools, policy, uh, elected officials, um, informal zoos and museums and nature centers, and how connected they are. The lines connecting the dots, the dots, also known as nodes, are individuals in Iowa who are working hard to bring STEM to the youth of our state. So that's a remarkable picture for me to consider the team that's expanded. Many of them are in this room, and we count you as very important partners in the STEM adventure we're on. So with that, that's my data, my update. Charles City, you're right in the mix. You're a rock star of the STEM network across the state. It's really delight to be here. None of us would be here if it weren't for the remarkable leadership of this lieutenant governor. She's been a champion out of the gates. She co-chairs this council. She herself has garnered national and international acclaim and respect for her leadership of our STEM initiative. Lieutenant Governor Kim Reynolds. about me, it's about a team, and we've got a phenomenal team, and I'm just blessed with how hard they're working. It's a public-private partnership, and so we're seeing educators and business and industry and nonprofit and homeschool and schools really coming together and looking for ways that we can bolster uh, STEM education. The STEM Advisory Council's number one uh, objective was to increase student interest and achievement in STEM to really make sure that no matter where a child lived in the state of Iowa, that they had access to these great, high-quality, scale-up programs. Because what I was seeing as we traveled the state is, you know, some areas had access, they were doing great things, but I would go down into some of the other regions and they didn't have those same opportunities. And we know that if we're going to stay innovative and competitive, not only as a state, but as a nation, we need our young people graduating with the skills in math and science and technology and engineering. Those STEM jobs are growing three times faster than non-STEM related jobs. They pay twice as much and uh, I can promise you we're going to have great high quality jobs in those areas right here in the state of Iowa. So we've got a lot of people that are working together to make sure that our young people have those opportunities to be successful in the future. I want to thank Dr. Cox for hosting us here. We appreciate it very much. It's great to be uh, in Charles City and to be at the high school, to be with the Comets. Um, so what I'm doing right now, and President Johnson and uh, Representative Pritchard, I wanted to say uh, thank you to you because um, Jeff indicated that we are a national model. We are a national model. We are glo a global model. We have had people from China and Japan and from multiple other states that have traveled to Iowa to see what we're doing here and why, how have you been able to reach over 100,000 students in this short time frame? And how have you been able to have scale-ups in almost every single district in the state? And so one of the reasons that we've been able to do that is because this is a bipartisan effort and the legislature has put funding behind it. So each year they've appropriated Jeff, is it 5-3? 5.2. 5.2. I'm always i trying to, maybe I'm working for 5-3, so we'll talk about that next year. Um, but I, that is significant because a lot of the other states have not put the funding into this uh, program. And the majority of those dollars go into high uh, scale-up programs that go to the school districts that get in the hands of kids. And so that's why I believe we're able to scale this and see the impact that we're seeing. So thank you um, so much. So. I'm on the 2016 STEM tour. We're in our fifth year. We're seeing great things. Jeff talked about some of the statistics. And so what I'm trying to do is highlight some 
um, excellence in STEM education that I'm seeing in school districts across the state. And guess what? You all are one of them. So you should give yourself a round of applause for being a so your commitment, it really is impressive, um, both in the school and in the broader community. And by doing this, then we tend to be kind of competitive as a state, and so it's an opportunity for, to, for me to highlight some of the best practices and challenge other school districts to maybe take a look at how they can take what you're doing into their community and provide their students the same type of um, uh, programming and opportunities that you are. I uh, remember watching The Greatness Stems from Northeast Iowa Schools video on your YouTube um, that Dr. Dan Cox and other neighboring school district leaders created, to, was that you? <laughs> to show really that commitment. And uh, you kept saying you have big plans for STEM in your community. And I really look forward to seeing what that's going to look like today. So um, those big plans I know have been on your radar for quite some time. Um, and since 2003, Charles City High School and the district have received, you guys have received four STEM scale-up program awards uh, from the Governor's STEM Advisory Council, a pint-sized science, Project Leads the Way, Gateway to Technology, Hyperstream, and uh, you have your own FTC team, I think, which I'm a big fan of that, so congratulations. And um, today, I'm also really proud to say that this district, alongside Osage, New Hampton, Red Rock for Marble Rock um, districts have um, um, are helping to grow one of Iowa's STEM best models. And so here's what I'm excited about. So I'm from rural Iowa, and I've seen great things happening in Waukee with Apex and Iowa Big and Cedar Rapids. And for you guys to say we're going to provide our kids with that same type of opportunities is a really, really big deal. And so I want to take what you're doing up here and take it to other rural parts of the state and say, this is how you collaborate, this is how you come together, and this is how we make things happen. Maybe in a little bit of a different way, but it's an opportunity for us to get some of those things done. So I just want to say thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for paving the way. I look forward to coming back and seeing all the great things that you're doing. Uh, Donna's enthusiasm when I walked in, I could, you could feel it, sense it, uh, the passion and the excitement, uh, and, and so but that's what it takes, I think. So great job, and I'm really looking forward to seeing all the great things that you're doing, so congratulations. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Now we have Paul Kumrad who will speak on behalf of our business community. Hi, uh, good afternoon, and, and thank you for uh, inviting us here um, and, and as a representative of Zoetis. This really isn't my thing, uh, but science is, and so anytime I have a chance to talk about science or promote science, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Um, I was asked just to speak for a minute what STEM is and why it's important for uh, Zoetis and some other science-based companies out in the audience there them as well, but uh, for those of you that don't know, Zoetis is the world's largest animal health company. We uh, discover, develop, and manufacture animal drugs, diagnostics, and vaccines, and um, in uh, Charles City here, we employ approximately 400 people and manufacture vaccines that are sold to 140 countries around the world. So our vaccines coming from Charles City. <laughs> Almost every place in the globe, uh, people are using products that are made by people that are probably your neighbors and friends. So I, I think that's a really cool thing to be coming out of rural Iowa. Um, why STEM in, important to us? I, I don't know how many of you know how vaccines are made, um, but there's a lot of science that goes into them, there's a lot of technology that goes into them. And we need um, young people coming into the workforce that have the skills and, and the you know, strong math and science and technology skills to come in and be the next generation so that we can keep making vaccines in Charles City for the next 100 years or whatever. So um, it's very important to us. And so keep up the good work at Charles City. Continue to support STEM. Uh, I think it's, it's critical to uh, 
to our business and, and to the other local businesses that they like in Valero. But anyway, uh, thanks a lot. I was told I only had 90 seconds. <laughs> I can talk a lot longer about science. <laughs> We have 16 different opportunities for you to see STEM in action on your um, program. You'll see all of the opportunities that you have to, to learn from our students. Everything from Lincoln to Washington Elementary, from middle school students and high school students. They will be in this maker space behind us. They will be out here as well and across the hall. So we're going to give them just a minute to uh, go get set up right now. And then I invite all of you to just kind of walk around and see some of the amazing STEM things that we have in place here at Charles City. And again, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah.